This is uh, grade 10, uh, physics exam prep number 9. In this one, we're going to start at question number 24, uh, where we're now on graphs of motion and we're heading towards the equations of motion. Okay. Uh, Right, let's have a look at question four. What I've done is I've given a paper table and I've given the various graphs and I've asked, you know, what fill in the, 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 the things underneath that, right? And use a sketch of the graph to explain the answers, okay? So let's have a look here, all right? Um, time and displacement graphs and etc. etc. Let's just put the table down, all right? A time displacement graph, all right? Um, let's have a look. Time versus displacement. Let's just take a, a time displacement graph, okay, and put you like this, all right, and it's a time, time, okay, usually seconds, okay, and displacement usually in meters, okay, kilogram meter seconds. Remember, you always convert to those chemistry, decimeters cubed, okay. So let's have a look. At time zero, let's say we are there. This is the one I've used. And we at time, um, what you call it? Let's have a look here. I'm just going to put up this. And at time, we're going to go up to there like that. Put that away. Okay. And we say, right, that's our time versus displacement. It means that at some point, okay, at some time t over there, we are x away from this guys is our origin always remember zero zero that's where we're starting it's where we're measuring time all right that's the start point when we click the stopwatch is that point so at the stopwatch click we were sitting at the origin we were right here next to me and it means when i click the stopwatch again at time t i was over there or over there or over there right how far away is x meters away all right then they want to know what is the slope right well let's have a look at the 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 slope of the line over here shall we um i'm just going to say this measure over here is what it's delta x this measure down here is delta t all right and therefore the slope is m is the gradient is what is delta x over delta t which is what distance over time hang on that is velocity isn't it it's measuring meters per second okay so the slope of the line is a measure of the velocity then the next question they say i think let me just check um, oh, no, they didn't say um, the area under the graph there. The next, they said, what is the slope? Well, then, now let's have a look at the next one then. This one over here is our displacement versus time. Okay. Please remember, when you are asked to sketch these or use a graph, right, please make sure you put in a proper heading label. I'm, I'm doing it not doing it a hundred percent i'm rather going through it quicker but just remember you must put a heading of the graph label your axes correctly and give an indication of what's going on that is showing that it's not just a slapdash graph that you've drawn per se right so you need to label those things okay those are theory issues that come straight out of the book okay moving along let's have a look at the next question shall we the next question is they have said to us um well, what I did in the answer, let, let's just go back, all right, for a sec. Uh, what I did is I said, all right, I said, let's look at the area under the graph of the previous one, all right? Let's look at the area. So the area under the graph is this dotted piece here, right? The area is a half base times height. Now, let's just look at the unit, shall we? That is a half multiplied by, the base is a measure of time, multiplied by height is displacement. So, what are we measuring is seconds times meters. Can you see? That actually gives us nothing, okay? 
Okay, meters times second isn't something that we're using. All right, that is why the area under there actually doesn't have any meaning to us. Let's have a look at the next one. The next one they asked is a velocity time graph, right? So here I'm going to draw velocity versus time. Okay, here's my graph coming in here now, like so. And we over here we put velocity meters per second, and here we put time in seconds, right? Like so. Okay. Just draw. Now, I've started, I just took it there. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have to be there. And because I kind of like using this, um, this little feature, I'm going to go like that. Now, let's just put that away. So, what I'm saying is, this is our origin. This is T equals zero seconds. This is as we press, press the stopwatch, right? So can you see this is t seconds, all right? What was the velocity? Look here. It means that we had a v initial here, and this number up here was going to be v final, wasn't it? All right? So it had an initial velocity. What does it mean? It means that as it went past me, okay, as it went past me, it had a velocity already. It had a velocity, a positive velocity, because remember these graphs actually go that way as well. I should, I should have actually put on this one, okay, that you can have negative displacement and a negative velocity as well, right? Because that is just that it's going left to right, right to left, all right? So what it means is here, let's just put that down, negative velocity there. So, let us now have a look at the this, this, um, slope of the line, okay? What have we got? Well, let's just take a point, okay? This is delta y, this is delta x. Let me just check, did I call the previous one correctly? Oh, look what Kevin did. Well, no, I did delta y over delta x, but delta x up top there, sorry, let me just clarify, this was displacement delta y axis is measuring displacement all right sorry if that created any confusion at all so what have we got here we've now got delta y over delta x delta y is a measurement of delta v and delta x is delta t so therefore the slope which is the gradient is in fact what it's delta V over delta T. This is meters per second over seconds, which is meters per second squared, which is equal to acceleration, isn't it? Right? It's meters per second squared, which is the acceleration. So the slope of the line is the acceleration. Let's now have a look at the area underneath, shall we? Okay. Uh, let me just color it in. The area is going to be, oh, really, when it does that, okay, when that's the area, isn't it? Let's have a look. What is the area, all right? The area is going to be equal to, well, we've got a triangle over here, a half base times height, right? There's our triangle up there, and underneath we've got a rectangle, which is, plus um, base times height, correct? Well, let's have a look. What does this give us? A half base is measured in seconds times height, meters per second, plus base is seconds times height is meters per second. Can you see here? This is going to be a half measure of meters plus that seconds cancels out meters. So the area underneath measures the displacement. All right? Let's take the formula. Well, let's just take it a little bit further, shall we? I'll just move it now back to, to black. Let's just have a look. What is 
the area under there, we said is displacement, a half base times height. Well, what is the base? The base is time, so it's half base times the height. What is the height of the triangle? Guys, what is the height of the triangle there? This is H. The height of the triangle, isn't it? Well, it's VF, VI there. So it's VF minus VI, isn't it? So therefore, we can say it's a half times VF minus VI, okay, times time, half base times height. Can you see that? Plus, and then we've got VI times time, all right? We're going to see these equations a little bit, a uh, little bit further on, all right? When we get to to Newton's um, equations of motion. Okay. Let us look now at the next one where they said draw an acceleration time graph. Uh, acceleration time graph. We're going to make it look like this. All right. Now, bear in mind, I could have a negative acceleration as well. Negative, positive. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's our acceleration, right? So that's A. So let's have a look, okay? The slope of the line, all right? The slope of the line over here, all right? Let us say we had this, all right? Okay? You can see that the slope of the line, M, the slope, is going to be what? Is going to be uh, delta acceleration over delta time. Okay? So the slope of the line is going to give us meters per second squared, all right, divided by seconds, which gives us a unit that we don't use. Okay? Essentially, we're looking at that is a changing acceleration. Okay? Uh, we don't we don't deal with those, so forget it. That's why I didn't ask for it. What is the area under this curve? Okay. The area is going to be equal to, well, let's say this is a time zero, and this is a time T1. So let's have a look. The area is going to be A, that height, right? A times, because this is the area I'm working out here, A times time. So what does that give me? Acceleration, meters per second squared, seconds, time there, right? Times time, which is what? Oh, that's measured in seconds. So I cancel out, and that leaves us with meters per second. So the area is actually velocity. So this is a plus area, positive area means what? It means velocity in the chosen direction. If we had a negative area, negative area, therefore negative velocity, means it's going the opposite way. Backwards, if you like. All right? All right. Now, oh, let's have a look now and see what happens in the next question, because the next question is one where we've got, I think, a a given velocity time um, graph, okay, which is a, a, a graph that I've, I've put up there. And that graph we've got, now we're going to do it as a, um, this is question 25. So if you just look, I'm going to sketch the graph very quickly, okay. Um, just move this right upside, I've got space. And over here I'm going to draw my graph. All right, A to B was zero to five seconds. Then I think that was eight, uh, 10, 10, 14, 18 was there, and 20 and 22, okay, 20 and 22, all right. I drew it as a graph, six meters per second this way. So first of all, we say it's a velocity time graph, right? And we say A to B is at 5, is at 6. A to B 
There we go. That's the first part. B now goes down through the 8 to minus 4. Okay. All right. So I'm sort of trying to draw this. Uh, it goes through there. Okay. Down to there at 10. And I'm going to say that's then at minus 4 meters per second. Okay. Then to 14, we go straight across there. Then we go up through 18 till we get opposite 20. Then at 20, we go straight across to 22. And I'm going to label this as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay? Right, so that's the graph. You've got it a lot more neater than I have. Okay, what are we asking, to, what are we being asked to do? Okay. I think we're saying describe the motion between A to B, B to C, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, let's have, how do we do these? Right. Well, the first thing is we say, okay, question one is between A and B, right? What do I do? I look and I say, check first, what graph are you given? If you are given a velocity time graph, then we know all the issues that the acceleration is the slope and that we're, we're measuring displacements, etc., etc., under it. Okay, that's the first thing from the previous table that we just looked at, right? Now, always say at start on the axis of time, all right? Say I am now here. What is my car or my object doing? My object currently, okay, if this is it, my object currently. At, as I click it, it's traveling at 6 meters per second to the right, okay? Please bear in mind, I've just said to the right, okay? They will tell you in the question, they will say to you in the question, the graph shown is a graph of an object uh, initially moving to the. That is then saying, if it's to the right, it means this is to the Right, and this side to the opposite, obviously, to the left. Okay? So, read the question when they're giving you a velocity time graph. And think about a toy car or something else in your hand and play the, play the game. Okay? Play the game of the graph. Do what the graph tells you to do with your car. Imaginary or as a drawing, whichever you prefer. So what is happening at that time? Can you remember I said a few sessions ago, we split it up into sections, okay? We're splitting it up. This over here is area AB, right? It's this piece here, isn't it? And yes, we're going to split it up into various different areas, right? We're going to split up into those areas. And down here, we're going to split up like that. And then we're going to split up this area here. And then I'm going to split. Can you see what I'm doing? All of these different areas are going to be split like that, right? We're going to, because we're examining from A to B, the same thing is happening. It is moving at 6 meters per second to the right. Therefore, between A and B, right? Let us have a look, okay? Now, you, as we go through this, look at your graph, okay? At, let us go at t equals naught. What is happening? The car is moving at v equals 6 meters per second to the right, okay? So, therefore, at t equals 5, Seconds, V is 6 meters per second to the right. Can you see what I've done? I've looked at my time interval and I've said between there and there what has happened. I am moving at 6 meters per second to the right. Therefore, now let us say, so what is the acceleration? Okay, what is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is the slope, and the slope, m, is equal to zero. Therefore, no acceleration, correct? 
no acceleration, it's flat. Constant velocity, V final, this is V initial. This over here is V final for that time period. Remember, in the physics, we're just going to split it into time periods, okay? The bite-sized chunks are time-related here. Okay, what do we do now? Let's look at then the area, the area AB, okay, is going to be what, right? It's going to be equal to, okay, um, 5 times 6. So it's 30 meters. In other words, I am now 30 meters to the right away after that time period. Okay, just think about it. Click the stopwatch, I'm here, and at that point five, I'm over there, right? Because I've traveled at six meters per second at a constant velocity. Let us move on and look at point, let us move on, look at point uh, part two is B to C. Okay, at B, velocity, that's my initial, because now my old final becomes my new velocity for the next piece. Remember, we stopped there. We didn't stop physically. But our time, we, we, we froze it. We clicked the stopwatch and we see what's happening. <clears throat> so we're freezing it at that point, aren't we? We're saying, right. So we're freezing time. We're saying, you're at six. You were my final velocity. Now I'm moving on to look at the next piece of time. Click. We have a look what's happening at the next piece of time. So my V initial at my next piece of time, let me go back to my graph, okay, over here. Um, my initial velocity was six meters per second, correct? Right. That was at B. At C, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just putting down what I've been told on the graph. I'm looking at C now. At point C, V, which is the final is equal to zero. So it has stopped. Right? It has come to a halt. It is at rest. Remember, in physics, at rest is stopped. Stationary. Okay? Which means, therefore, we can now look at some of the issues around it. We can say, right, what is the slope? The slope of the line, go to your graph, when I can get there. Let us work out the slope of the line, shall we? I'm just going to use blue here. Okay. So I want to know M. Well, obviously, what do we do? We don't take interim, you could take interim values if the graph is drawn accurately. But essentially, rather take the whole, the whole thing. And therefore, it says this piece here is 6, this piece here is 3. But now remember, what do we have to do? We always have to do <coughs> V final minus V initial over time was the slope, correct? What is V final minus initial? V final, it's at rest. Zero minus six over, and I think it was three seconds. Yep, therefore, minus two meters per second squared. The slope is the acceleration. In this case, it's a negative acceleration, which means, hang on, the thing was traveling there and suddenly it stopped. What did it do? You put the brakes on. It slowed down. <clears throat> the negative is indicating that the body was moving this way, like this. And what did we do? We applied a force, which is what we have get to. But we applied an acceleration this way. So this is negative because the blue was assumed as the positive direction. Right? So we're traveling that way and we start applying an acceleration this way. It's going to slow us down. Next part of this. <clears throat> Next part of it. 
I'm going to get myself back to um, my black pen. Next part is we need to work out what the um, displacement is. So we say area. The area is going to be what? Half times base times 6, which is going to be equal to 9 meters. So it means I've actually gone another. Remember, I was 30 meters. It took me 9 meters, 9 meters to stop. That is my breaking distance. It's how long I need to stop my car, like that. Because if I don't have enough room, enough distance, I'm going to smack into the, the, the car in front or the whatever in front. So we've got to make sure that we've got enough. And that's a key concept when we're coming to using some of the examples that they give us in Newton's Law of Motion. Now we've worked that out. Let's move along and have a look at question um, C to D. Let's have a look. C to D. Start first at C. V, we're just reading off at C. V is equal to what? V is equal to zero. So this is my initial velocity for this piece. At D, V final is equal to what? V final is equal to minus four. It's negative, isn't it? Therefore, we can say slope. M, it's, we know it's going to be acceleration, is going to be minus 4 minus 0, okay? V final minus V initial, remember, over, and in this case the time was, I think, um, 2. All right? Which is going to be equal to uh, minus 2 meters per second squared. So it is still accelerating at minus 2. But it means it's now stopped. It's now coming back at me. And it's coming back towards me at 4 meters per second. Do you see that? If you look at the graph, at time um, D, at point D, it's traveling at minus 4. It means it's coming back towards me. Which means what? Which means it's making up distance again. Okay. And now we work out once again, displacement is a half times base times height. Have a look at the triangle. The base in this case was 2 times minus 4, which is the, this was the time, this was the velocity. So therefore it's going to be minus 4 meters. What does this minus mean? It means it's coming back. Towards us. All right? All right? It's coming backwards. It's moving backwards now. Okay. D to E. Okay. D to E. D to E, velocity is constant. Velocity. Okay. Constant velocity of minus four meters per second. Therefore, no acceleration. Okay. Why not? Slope is equal to zero. All right. No acceleration, constant velocity. Just think logically about that. Think about a bicycle moving. Put all of these things into a context. They are so much easier to understand. Okay. And displacement again is the last thing that I'm going to do. The displacement is going to be equal to four seconds times minus 4 meters per second, which is going to be minus 16 meters backwards again. In other words, backwards, it's towards us. Okay, critical, towards us. All right, okay, my us doesn't look like an us there, does it? My us looks like a, uh, I don't know, very funny Greek symbol. Okay. That's better. All right. And now we go E to F. Okay. I'm going to just speed up a little bit. E to F 
body comes to rest. So we say at F, okay, body at rest. V final is equal to zero. At E, V equals minus four. Correct? This way. All you're doing is reading this off a graph. So what do I say? Okay, slope. Okay, the slope is zero minus minus four. Okay, divided by four, which is going to be equal to four over four, which is one meter per second squared. Okay, it's accelerating. What does that mean? It's now accelerating to the east again, away. So we stopped, we accelerated this way, we moved back. Now we're moving away from us again. I want to just do the displacement quickly. Is the area, it is a half base times height. Half base times height in this case is a half times four times minus four, okay? Which is going to be equal to minus eight meters. All right, minus eight, because it needed eight meters to stop before it came to rest. Remember, it's moving back now towards me, but it now needed time to stop, and then it's going to move away. All right, okay, accelerating positively, but still moving towards me. All right, okay, accelerating to the east means the body is moving this way, but A is now that way. Right, which means it's actually stopping coming towards me, doesn't it? Okay, displacement we've got. All right, let's um, have a look at F to G. F to G. Velocity, what did we do again? We said, right, velocity is, velocity is going to be equal to uh, Vf is equal to 2 meters per second. V initial, it was at rest, so zero meters per second. All right, therefore slope is going to be two over two, one meter per second squared away, okay, to the east, okay, away from us. Okay, I want to now do displacement. Displacement is going to be a half times two times two which is going to be equal to plus two meters. So it's moved two meters away again. None of this is in essence really difficult. The key is just go ahead and read it off the graph. From G to H, right? What did we have? We had constant velocity. Okay, just go back to my graph, okay, of two meters per second because Vf, which is at point H, is equal to two meters per second plus, and V initial, which is at G, is equal to also plus two meters per second. Therefore, M is going to be equal to change two minus two over, and the time was two seconds, zero meters per second squared is my acceleration. Constant velocity, it must be, right? Lastly, the displacement in this piece, the displacement is equal to the area, which is going to be equal to, just take it down, um, two times two, is equal to plus four meters away again. The last question, H, was the total displacement Okay, half, in other words, they want to know, this is when we click the stopwatch at zero, what, where is this body at time 22 seconds? In other words, where is the body at t equals 22 seconds? So after all this toing and fraying, accelerating, stopping, decelerating, whatever you want to call it, where am I eventually after 22 seconds? How do I work it out? 
We sum all the areas. It's sum of the areas. The total displacement is the sum of the area, right? So it's going to be 30 plus 9 minus 4 minus 16 minus 8 plus 2 plus 4, all right, is going to be equal to plus 17 meters from the origin. In other words, what does that mean? It means the block is 17 meters away from me. So after all that, the block, now when we stop measuring, okay, the block's still doing its thing, but when we click the stopwatch at H, at T equals 22, the block is 17 meters away from us, okay? So what did we do? We looked at them and we just said, right, read off the graph, calculate VF from the graph, V final, V initial, T, calculate the slope, see if I've got an acceleration, is it positive? which means it's accelerating that way, it's getting faster that direction, or is it constant, or is it at rest, in other words, V equals zero, that's how you proceed with these. I have, I think, gone over my apologies for that. Thanks for watching. Next section we're going to do is going to be uh, Newton's Law of Motion, where we've got all the examples, aeroplanes, cars, braking distances, etc., etc. Cheers, I'll see you in that one. Um, have a look at this, that graph again. Go through those. Ask yourself the questions. Maybe go back to look at some of them you had for homework. Ask yourself the questions. That's the way to get through them. Cheers. Good luck. Bye.